My research work is in the broad area of computational mathematics, computational biomechanics, and STEM education. I use mathematics as a medium to solve big challenges. We start with challenge-based learning from the Sustainable Development Goals, for example. Pick one particular goal and try to see how mathematics and other subjects can be used to solve big problems. For example, Sustainable Development Goal on health and well-being involves understanding how diseases spread. You could use strategies from calculus in mathematics to understand how something spreads very quickly, very slowly, something like malaria, dengue, chikungunya, Zika. And one can write mathematical models and then solve these models using computer simulations and predict using data science to be ready with vaccines, for example. So that's the broad area I work on using mathematics. The area of biomechanics, I am very interested and I work in the area of uh, stroke, heart attack, understanding how blood flow and arterial wall interacts and can cause diseases inside the body. Finally, I'm very interested in STEM education. STEM stands for science, technology, engineering, mathematics, and how do you actually bring that into education to excite students, to help them enhance their 21st century skills, which is communication, collaboration, critical thinking, and creativity. So STEM, again, is science, technology, engineering, mathematics. It is a integrated, holistic way to engage students to enjoy problem solving and understand how to solve a problem using different subjects. And it is a very multidisciplinary way to solve problems. But to solve problems, there is not just the textbook approach. One can do it hands-on, which is called kinesthetic. One can solve problems using pictures that is visual learners, some of them are auditory learners. So one can actually make education accessible to all these different types of learners and STEM is a great way to doing it. How can STEM be integrated with arts to make STEAM, S-T-E-A-M? And to solve all problems, one must be very good and fluent in reading and writing. So if we can include the R, then it becomes S for science, T for technology, R for reading and writing, and then uh, E for engineering, A for arts, M for mathematics, and we have to combine all these subjects to innovate. So, and we have to inspire the next generation in Brazil, for example. So we go from STEM to STEAM to stream to streaming. And we stream audio, we stream video, we stream movies. Why can't we stream education? The educational system in all countries revolves around one simple philosophy. We teach the content first. For example, we teach the mathematics and then ask the students to go solve the problem. We teach the physics, then solve the problem. It'll be very interesting if we reverse the philosophy and ask the students to first expose them to the problem and ask them to find the mathematics to do it, find the technology to do it. The challenge is that the teachers are trained in a traditional way and they present the material the way they learnt it. And all teachers try to do a good job. For example, they go to class every day trying to please students by giving them feijoada every day. But the teachers, as they try to please their students, the students, on the other hand, are sitting there and thinking, why is this teacher giving me feijoada every day? Why not pizzas for a change? This is the gap between teaching and learning. So to be a good teacher, one does not just go and lecture very well or write 
on the board very well. They need to know how to anticipate, which means plan the lesson before coming in. And then they need to monitor, that means walk around the class and try to actually understand how the students are learning. And then sequence and select the way they are going to ask the children to speak or the students to speak. And finally, they try to connect what happened in the classroom. So in a way, the teacher's role has gone from just simple instruction to facilitation. So if the teachers can be good facilitators, they will be really great teachers. Most institutions treat students as consumers of education. They are here to pay tuition and learn a subject. But the current generation, we cannot treat students as consumers of education. They should be treated as producers of information. So, and not just producers of information, but peer reviewers. So it is important for teachers to enhance their pedagogical practices and start to teach in innovative ways. One of the main competencies, I would say, for teachers, whatever subject they teach, is to help students understand data, data all around us, whether it is social studies, whether it is mathematics, whether it is engineering. One needs to understand how to collect data, how to interpret data, how to visualize data, how to predict with data, and then you are really understanding and predicting what can possibly happen, how you can stop an infectious disease, how you can actually uh, predict terrorism in some place. And so I think this notion can be extended to any discipline. Active learning can take different forms. It can be thought of as experiential learning, where you take the students outside the classroom and try to understand how to incorporate the subject, for example, mathematics, by building a garden, for example, and talking about areas and perimeters. So experiential learning. Active learning can also be incorporated as inquiry-based learning, which means not to give the answers to the students, but ask questions, ask questions that make them curious. And it is okay if they actually say the wrong answer because they have to try again. And so you can only achieve success by trying several different ways. And then uh, I would also say active learning involves challenge-based learning, not just teaching what is in the textbook, but go outside the textbook and solve problems for the society, for the impact. And finally, active learning can be thought of as inside the classroom, how we teach, which means not just stand in the front of the board and lecture, but actually be in the middle of the class and let the students talk more and the teachers talk less. In fact, one of the countries that is on the top of education is Singapore. And their philosophy is very simple. Teach less, learn more. If the teachers teach less, the students will learn more. And that's what their philosophy is. Another country I would like to quote is Finland where the philosophy of active learning is learning by doing. And uh, once again, it is okay to uh, make mistakes, but you learn from your mistakes.